when we read the Acts of the Apostles, it's uh, astounding to see the, the change that has occurred in Peter especially. And I can imagine that when Peter would have preached, probably for the rest of his life, he would always have remembered and probably would have recounted over and over again that in Jesus' moment of need, he abandoned him. I'd say Peter never forgot that he, at a critical time he fell short of the mark. That he had had all of these wonderful intentions, Lord, I will never abandon you, Lord, I'll be with you, Lord, if I, if I have to die with you, I will never abandon you. And the Lord then so calmly prophesies that before the cock crows three times, you will have denied me. So how did Peter feel at the time? It's kind of hard to imagine, maybe a bit deflated. But then in, in the heat of the moment, in the, the threatening violence and the growing anger of the crowd, uh, and then this, this servant girl says to him, I, I can tell by your accent you're a Galilean, you're one of his followers. No, 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 I've never heard him, don't know who you're talking about, what are you saying? Just so, so easy, just in, in, in those moments, just in the kind of the, the, the reaction, the impulse of the moment. Uh, and then again, you can kind of feel this anger growing in the crowd as they're looking for, for Jesus' death. You know, there's, a, there's a, a, a viciousness there, and, uh, which he, of course he would have perceived as well. So just in, in the moment, three times he denies it. He hasn't even been threatened. He hasn't even been, you know, it's not like a Roman soldier came to him and said, are you one of his followers? If you say, yes, I'll kill you. And then he denies in that moment. No, it's, it's in the kind of the simple conversations with servants warming themselves at fires, you know? So what, what I think Peter would never have forgotten that. He would never have forgotten the fact that deep down, he's weak. Deep down, without God's grace, uh, he can't do anything good. And what I think would, would have been critical for, for Peter is that this knowledge would have actually served him very well as a Pope. Right? So in order to, to guide the church to not say, I'm Peter, I'm the one the Lord shows, I'm incredible. But rather, I think he would have said, I'm Peter, I'm the one the Lord chose, and I'm the one who denied him. I'm the one he forgave though afterwards. And I'm the one who through no merit of my own he gave the Holy Spirit, and that is the, 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 the Spirit that I testify to today. This is the Savior, our Lord, that I testify to today. So I think his, his fall would have actually served him in keeping him humble for this incredible task that he had of guiding the church in those first decades. So they're cut to the heart. You know, when, when, when Peter preaches to them, the whole house of Israel can be certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ, the anointed one. And the people are cut to the heart. What must we, what must we do? What, what have we done? What must, what, how can we get out of this? Like we, we're the ones who are screaming, crucify him, crucify him. And now he's actually the, the, the Messiah that we've been waiting for. What, how, how do we undo this? How do we get back? But what must we do? And St. Peter says, you must repent. And then there's a, a long discourse. We, we, we don't hear all of it. Every one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I think that's such a relevant idea for, for each one of us. Okay, we've all been baptized. We have received great gifts from the Lord. And yet maybe in the heat of the moment or in the heat of conversation, or when something is considered politically correct, but maybe against our faith, whatever it may be, just in those moments, it can be that something slips out or we say something just to fit in, just to be normal. You know, the whole discussion now of, of, of everything going on as regards COVID, it, it can be very difficult for people to know what, what they're supposed to do, what they're supposed to say as regards vaccines, no vaccines, masks, no masks, all of that. Um, and so in the moment, maybe people say things that they don't mean, something that maybe falls short of the mark, something that maybe uh, would appear to, to, to deny their faith, their love for Christ, the importance of these Easter, Easter liturgies to them, the importance of the Holy Mass to them. 
as society becomes increasingly uh, anti-Catholic, or at least indifferent to the faith, it's going to become increasingly difficult to stand for what the Lord calls us to. So these are, these are difficult times. These are times which, which I think remind us of, of St. Peter, times where just in the heat of the moment, we might c- come out and deny. Uh, say, yeah, yeah, sure, mass, mm-hmm, yeah. And deep down, you know, I had an opportunity to say, actually, I find mass quite important and I'd never miss it on the weekend or I even watch recorded masses during the week on occasion. But we find those things difficult to say or to have a a pro-God post on Facebook or whatever our social media is. But if we too, like St. Peter was and like he urges the Jews, if we too are cut to the heart by our infidelity at times, we, like St. Peter, can learn from that. You know, those kind of situations where you make a mistake and you say, I remember listening to an interview with Michael Schumacher back in the day. He was a Formula, very, very good Formula One driver, very, very successful and very German. Uh, and he was asked, uh, so Michael, I mean, are you, are you hard on yourself? And he said, well, I must be hard on myself. Uh, you know, you don't get good unless you're hard on yourself. And he said, but well, like, you know, they, they, they said, the interviewer said, they, they call you quite cold as if you never make a mistake. And he says, I do make mistakes, but I only make it once. You know, if I'm driving around a track, I'm, I, it may happen, yes, that I make a mistake, but I would only make that mistake once. And I just thought, ooh, that's cold. <laughs> that's very German. And yet, uh, it's, it's, it's like a good attitude to have as a guard, saying it may happen. Now, obviously, I'm not saying, I'm not recommending people fall into idolatry or adultery once, just do it once. No, of course not. But the fact that we know we're capable of sin, the fact that we know we have sinned, the fact that we know we have fallen in a certain way, it can happen. Don't let it happen again. <laughs> I'm saying this myself, you know. Don't let it happen again. I'm not going to fall in that way again. Not through my own, like, st- sticking in my heels, my own pride. But through the grace of God, I don't want to offend the Lord in that way again. Through the grace of God, I don't want to fall in that way again. I want to learn from my sin. I want to learn from, from these mistakes that I've made that they do not happen again. And then I think we, like St. Peter, can be filled with a, a great confidence when we're preaching, teaching, witnessing to the Lord, but a confidence that comes from him, a confidence that comes from not, not we're so amazing and so perfect and I've never fallen, but a confidence that no matter what I've done, I, God has always held me in the palm of his hand. And whenever I've come back asking for forgiveness, he has always welcomed me. He has always shown me mercy. And so that's yet another reason that our faith is full of so much joy and hope and and mercy and consolation and compassion because we have been the beneficiaries of all of these graces so often. And so we ask the good Lord today to continue to renew our church in this alleluia, this joy, this hope of resurrection, this confidence in God's mercy. Amen.